Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. Tonight, in Yerts Hashem, with God's help, we're going to be sharing a beautiful secret. A lesson that if, God willing, if you have the merit, can help you if you remember this message in, in times of need. God willing, we won't have any tests, we won't have, have any struggles. But if, God forbid, we find ourselves in a difficult situation, if we remember these words, we'll be able to get through it with flying colors and smoothly. There's a verse that our sages teach us. There's a, there's a saying that our sages teach us, our, 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 our leaders teach us, the following verse, the following saying. It says, Anilo nivrasi ela leshameshet koni. I was only created to serve my master. I was not created for any other purpose than to serve my master. Meaning, God only created you in order to serve him. What does this mean and how could this save me in any situation? The verse here is beautiful, saying the one who owns us, the one who we belong to, created us to serve him. We belong to God. We do not belong to ourselves. Our bodies do not belong to us. Our souls do not belong to us. Our entire being belongs to the Almighty. And in his kindness, he is renting our bodies to us to serve him, so to speak. We are here on a mission. Now, this verse this is, we are here to serve him, is something that if we have to remind ourselves when we're in any situation. What does this mean? It doesn't say we were created to be comfortable, or we were created to, to, be ha to, to have fun, or we were created even to just feel spiritually excited all the time. No, it says we were created to serve him. So when you find yourself doing something that is not exactly the most enjoyable thing, you have to remind yourself that God created you to serve Him and He desires that for some reason, for some reason He desires that you right now should be doing this very thing. I'll give you an example. You're learning, even let's say you're learning Torah and you're really enjoying yourself. You're feeling spiritually high, spiritually elevated, learning deep Torah, you're focused, you're, you're understanding it well. All of a sudden, your wife or your mother or someone in your family asks you to go to the store to buy something, saying the store is about to close. I need you to pick up some eggs. I'm having guests over tonight, and you're the only person who can help me right now. Please. So you have to ask yourself. You, you know, you, you know, you have to. You know, this this job that this task that's being demanded of you is the, is what you need to do right now because we know that to, do, do, learning Torah is very important. It's infinite. But when you have a mitzvah to do that nobody else could fulfill that mitzvah, then it, then you have to do that mitzvah. You're allowed to interrupt your Torah study. Somebody else could fulfill that mitzvah. For example, if you know your your mother or your wife asked a few other people, and somebody else is just you know playing video games, then it's more important that they should go to the store, not to interrupt you from your Torah study. But if nobody else is there and you're the only person that, who could do this mitzvah for your family member, you have to do it, and you're supposed to interrupt your Torah study to do this mitzvah that only you could accomplish. So you have to tell yourself. You, and let's say you're feeling, you're learning Torah and you're so excited and then someone interrupts you, but you have to do this mitzvah. You say, wow, but I'm learning Torah and I just want to, you know, oh, now I have to go into the world, go into a store, go into my car, lift up some stuff, put on, pay, pay for something, put stuff in package, go home, lift it up, go up the stairs. And now I'm not going to learn. I'm going to waste, I, I'm not, I was so spiritually focused. I was so, I was so spiritually high and now I have to go into the world to... You have to remember this verse. I was created only to serve my master. The Almighty wants you to go to the store now to do a mitzvah, to buy what is needed for this family member of yours. That is what your soul needs right now. This is what God wants of you. And this is something that is so, this is the most spiritually high because this is, you're elevating the most physical of physical into this godliness. This also, if you're in, in, in the face of a test, somebody's bothering you, you want to get angry, God forbid. We know anger is like idol worship. Anger is a very big sin to, to give in to your anger. To be tested with anger, we can't always control. But to give in to the anger is like, is like idol worship. It's a massive sin to give in to your anger. Anger is destructive. It's like a fire. It destructs and destroys all around. We have to, we have to try to remove anger from our midst. So when you find yourself... And somebody's bothering you, you're about to get angry, you have to breathe and say, I was created to serve Hashem. He created me and he, this service of him demands, he wants me to serve him by overcoming my anger right now, by remembering him, by controlling myself, by relaxing. 
going to be okay. The Almighty is with me. He's testing me. I'm overcoming it. And when you overcome that, it's the greatest pleasure in the world to the Almighty. Our service of Hashem is His greatest pleasure. Causes Hashem the greatest pleasure. And now here's a little, a little sweet, a little, a little treat that's going to help you get through this with flying colors. To remember that it's yes, it's hard sometimes to serve God in the face of struggle, but this is Hashem's greatest pleasure, and this is the greatest possible service of Him. And when Mashiach comes, the Almighty is going to reveal to Him the pleasure we caused Him. You're going to feel the pleasure that you caused God, so to speak according to your level. It's going to be the greatest possible pleasure. Shem's going to share with us the pleasure he got from us. The greatest possible pleasure. So focus on this. Realize that this is your purpose of creation. It's also, you know, sometimes people, they say, a, man, a guy, a, guy, a man is, a young man is learning in yeshiva. He's learning in, in Bible school that it's called yeshiva in Hebrew, in the holy language, in Lashon HaKodesh. And he's learning in yeshiva, and then he gets married, so he has to go out of yeshiva, he has to go build a home, he has to start, you know, focusing on worldly things, going to the grocery store, buying stuff, paying bills, making money, getting involved in the world, being married, you know, being uh, focused on everyday life, having children, spending money, working hard, sleeping less, learning less even sometimes. But it doesn't say just to learn Torah. It says also to live Torah. And sometimes live, living Torah means that the, to fulfill the biggest mitzvah to have children. So it says, I was created only to serve the Almighty. And that means going out of yeshiva and bringing, not just learning Torah in yeshiva, but bringing, learning Torah in your home. Having children who are going to go to yeshiva and learn Torah and carry on this generation. If you stay in yeshiva forever, you're not going to have children. Who's going to learn, yeshiva, who's going to learn in yeshiva next, in the next 50 years? So the whole point is, yes, to learn Torah as much as you can. And, and any, any, few, any extra moment you have, you must learn Torah. Torah is the most infinite thing. But to not just learn Torah, but to live Torah. To fulfill the mitzvahs within the Torah. And to know that right now, only you could have children with your specific wife or your specific husband. Only you guys can make your build your home. That is the most important thing. And then know that the Torah you learn when you're married, the Torah you learn when you're involved in the world, involved in mitzvahs, or if you're busy, you're working, you, you don't have time to learn as much Torah, the Torah you learn there, the, any moment you have there is infinite. It's more valuable because you're busy. It's more It's more precious. Mm-hmm. It's not in any way to say that we shouldn't learn as much Torah as possible. If you're able to be in yeshiva, it's the biggest mitzvah, biggest slus, biggest merit. If you're able to be in a Bible school, yeshiva, you should take this opportunity. There's no nothing like it. It's, it's like the Garden of Eden, you know, there's food being made for you. You know, you don't have bills to pay. You probably have yeshiva f- fees to fa- pay, but you're getting Torah offered, spoon-fed to you. It's, everyone should spend time in yeshiva if they can. But just to remember that there's a point where you're supposed to go out of Noah's Ark. You're supposed to go out of the yeshiva of the Midbar and go into the land and build a family. And, you know, to build our nation up. To build the, the, the world. To bring more souls into the world. And then, slowly, and, and as much as possible, try to learn Torah within your home. And if you, the more Torah you could learn, it's, there's, you know, if you could, sometimes people, they get married, they learn even more than when you receive it. Why? Because now they're stronger. They're, they're, they're involved in the world. They're actually learning Torah with more energy than even when they're achieving, even more hours. So we have to, the, this is just the beautiful verse that we have to remember. I was only created to serve my master, my, my owner, my, the one who I belong to. God and God loves us. This is our mission. We're only here to serve Him. We're here for to, to carry out His will, to carry out His His His, his desire here in this world, to bring God in godliness into this world. When we do a mitzvah, we turn the world, the physicality, into a vessel to, to, to absorb and reveal and shine forth, to be shined forth with godliness. It's the most unbelievable thing. This world is turning into a platform, into a stage for the revelation of God. And we're all a part of it. We're in the final generation. May Hashem bless you. I hope you like this message. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. You can donate to the Torah channel. You can help support us so we can spread more messages. So you could be a partner with us financially to elevate all of your wealth. And we know when you give to Daki, you give charity. The Almighty promises to reward you with great wealth. May God bless you all. May we all experience blessings physically and spiritually. And this test that says, God says, if you give tzedakah, you will have, if you give charity, you'll have more money. God will give you more money than you had before. God bless you all. May you experience the coming of Chef immediately.